heart for old. People are dying every day because they don't have an organ uh, for a transplant. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Speaking of doctors, there are some doctors and researchers who want to replace the dog as man's best friend with a pig, specifically a variety called miniature swine, which top out at a mere 300 pounds, well below the thousand or so of adult swine. These smaller pigs won't be pets, though. They'll be organ donors. After some genetic modifications, their organs may be used to save human lives. It's called a xenograft. Xenograft comes from the Greek word xenos, which means stranger or guest. Xenophobia is fear and hatred of anything foreign or strange. Xenografts are tissue transplants from one species to another, from a pig to a human, for example. Normally, the recipient's immune system no would reject such a transplant. Human to human transplants are called allografts. Ouch. In this case, the immune system needs to be suppressed to avoid rejection. Autografts are transplants from one place to another on the same human. The immune system has no problem here. It likes its own kind. For some 20 years now, human-to-human -human transplants seem to have worked pretty well. So why even bother with xenografts from pigs with all the immune response problems? The reason why we are all so interested in the xenotransplant is because, paradoxically, the success of ordinary allogeneic transplants has been so great that we have run out of organs. There just aren't enough cadaver organs to satisfy the need of, for all the people whose lives could be saved by a transplant. That's why we're really working so hard on this. It's because people are dying every day. Right now, there are about 80,000 patients on waiting lists in the United States alone for various donor organs. By all accounts, 16 people die each day for one of a human donor organ. David Sachs believes that pig organs can fill the gap. Well, we would match the donor to the same size as the recipient. So for an adult who weighed 70 kilograms, we'd use a 70 kilogram pig. It's incredibly surprising how similar the pig is to man. Um, it wouldn't be your choice of your most related relative, uh, but when you look at things like heart rate, blood pressure, serum chemistries, uh, the pig has shares an incredible amount in terms of physiology with man. So physically, pigs are a lot like people. Genetically, there are some significant differences between pigs and humans. Powerful drugs are already used to suppress the immune response to a human organ transplant. The amount of drugs needed to suppress the immune response to an unmodified pig organ could be lethal. The major barrier to xenotransplantation is rejection, the immune response against that transplant. And there are two ways we are trying to overcome that. One is by modifying the donor through genetic engineering, changing some of the antigens on the pig, the ones that are most difficult uh, to overcome, and changing those such that the, there will be much less of an immune response to them. And the other is by changing the immune response of the recipient in a specific way, which we call inducing tolerance. Basically, it means making pigs a little less pig-like and humans a little more pig-tolerant. It's working toward a genetic middle ground. For example, pigs normally carry a gene missing in humans, one that generates a sugar our bodies recognize as foreign. At the beginning of the year, two biotechnology companies announced that they had cloned piglets with that gene knocked out. It turns out that on all species except humans and old world primates, the terminal sugar, the last sugar on the surface of all cells, on the sugars on all cells, is alpha-1,3 gal. But sometime during evolution, old world primates and humans lost the enzyme for that sugar. So we don't have alpha-1,3 gal, and therefore we make a lot of antibody against it. That antibody appears to be one of the major barriers to xenotransplantation. 
Modifying pig organ donors is half the equation. Making human recipients more tolerant is coming along too. The human thymus is where white blood cells are programmed to recognize invaders. By injecting pig cells in or near the thymus, some white cells are trained to accept pig tissues. This has worked in baboons, which serve as a human-like animal model. But there is another concern. Pigs have something called porcine endogenous retroviruses, retroviruses that are part of the animal's own DNA. Every species has endogenous retroviruses. And so in human transplantation, by transplanting an organ from one human to another, you're not exposing the human to a new endogenous retrovirus. We all have these pieces or fragments of DNA in our genome. The issue in xenotransplantation is that we are potentially introducing a new endogenous retrovirus into the patient. Viruses that jump from one species to another can behave badly. A virus jumping from monkey to human, for instance, may have led to the disease known to us as AIDS. Tackling the virus problem has taken time. So has everything else about xenograft research. This project at Massachusetts General Hospital is now in its 12th year, but now the pace of tissue engineering research is picking up. So the question is, will these pigs ever fly? We've moved the survival time of pig organs in preclinical models from minutes to hours to 30 days to, in the extreme, almost 100 days of survival time. Now, we think we'll be able to put together our protocols in the next year and a half to two. And once we have survival times on the order of six months to a year, we'll be able to start very small, carefully controlled clinical trials. In the 40s, George Orwell wrote a grim little book called Animal Farm. In it, farm animals throw out the farmers and take over, but pigs end up running the show and becoming more and more like the humans they ejected. That could be a parable for research that's going on today. One thing I wonder though, will the pigs have to sign organ donor cards? The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television, with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.